On the opening day of the season, the hoops beat Drada 2-1 at Hunky Dory's Park. Going into the game, Stephen Kenny's side were hoping to arrest a four-match winless run. Commentary from Damien Richardson and Stephen Alcon. Kerry Gilbert with a good tackle. O'Brien's in chase here, and Prendergast makes the mistake, and it's just wide. Well, that was incredible. Gary O'Neill managed to outmaneuver Derek Prendergast and was almost in. Philippan sends it long. There's no flag here. Declan O'Brien with the snapshot. Again, it's straight at the goalkeeper. Still the drizzle falls in this inclement evening. Good play by Twig to O'Neill. Now McCabe scores the goal! Brilliant finish. Perhaps Gabriel Sava should have done better. But from very little, Shamrock Rovers have found a way to get on top. And as you can see, the goalkeeper is really annoyed with himself. It's Rovers 1, draw the United nil. McCabe keeps it down. Hits it hard. Sorbus beats the keeper. And McCabe's free kick. Big high ball to the back post. Chance here! Sives, who was in there, onto it came Twig. Sava made the initial save, still Rovers have it up there. The cross ricocheting all over the place and cleared away. Sava did well, but I feel Paul Crowley is the one who really saves it. Keep it as well, here's Crowley throwing his body on the line, stopping a certain goal. A little challenge there by Gary McCabe that referee Alan Kelly had a very close look at and the Drogheda United player is still down. Now the referee deemed that this was a fair challenge. Oh, that's a dreadful tackle. That is shocking. Look, he goes right over the top of the ball. That could easily have caused serious injury and the referee missed it. Good movement by O'Neill and receipt of the throw in from Sean Gannon. McCabe stayed on side this time. Good block though by hand. McCabe keeps possession. Rice with the cross. Twig under this. Prendergast. And Twig! Well, he doesn't miss chances like that. More mistakes in the draw of the United defence. And he was onto it in a flash. Sava with no chance. That is emphatic from Gary Twig. His 70th league goal. Here's Billy Dennehy. And McCabe. And a chance for Brennan to shoot. I think it was going wide, but that was a good save by Gabriel Sava. And a sweet strike by the rover is Brennan. McCabe. Killian Brennan. Lots of options to his left. He wants to go there himself, though. There was a little challenge. The referee tried to play advantage again, but he's called it back for a free kick to Rovers. I think we'll be able to see a shot in Killian Brennan, 35 yards out. He loves it from here. Brennan! Corner of the rigging, and it was so close to going in. A really sweet strike by Killian Brennan. So renowned for those kind of free kicks. Kennedy swings it in, the header off the line, the header again, it's in, it's Gary Twig. He's always alive for that loose ball in the box, and he does it again. The same failing for draw, the failure to deal with a decent ball into the box, both against Ken O'Man initially, and the slight movement of Gary Twig gives him the easiest chance he's ever likely to get. But what a confidence boost this will be for Shamrock Rovers and especially for their manager Stephen Kenny, who has come under so much criticism in recent weeks. O'Brien allowed to turn. Great shot! Brilliant goal. Well, that's what Declan Fabio O'Brien is capable of. He turned Craig Sivers on a sixpence. Ken O'Man is furious with his centre half for letting Drogheda United break the clean sheet. But this was a wonder strike. Final whistle goes. And the final score in the Tallis Stadium, emphatic enough, Shamrock Rovers 3, Drogheda United 1. We're happy with the win, Drogheda have been going well this season, they've got some, some good players, so I think uh, we definitely deserve the win tonight and uh, we created a lot of chances and thankfully we took three. We've been scoring goals at home and um, you know we couldn't keep that clean sheet that we wanted. But nevertheless, it's, it's an important three points. I wouldn't say they were exceptionally good. I thought we made it very easy for them at times. 
Um, that's the first time I've saw our back four being weak, and it's an unusual because we normally defend very, very well. Uh, Rovers are a very good side. I expected a backlash after their defeat in Sligo Rovers. They are the champions, and I think to come here, maybe some of our players are a bit overawed, I don't know. But I certainly felt that it was a poor performance by us that would obviously help Rovers. I don't know if you could comment on this. This is a tackle by uh, Gary McCabe. I think it was on Sean Brennan of Drogheda. And it looked like a fairly, a fairly strong challenge. What's your views on this? Right. Um... Damien Richardson said they thought it was a, a fairly strong old challenge. Yeah, it was. He's, he's a, he, I'll have to, he'll have to learn how to tackle Gary, you know. Hmm. Um, Johnny, we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, it just in an overall sense, I suppose, from Shamrock Rover's point of view, after four games without a win in, in the league, it was important to pick up three points there at home. It was, because Strutter are going well, as we all know. They're doing well this season. It's obviously going to be a tricky game for them at home. But they got the three points, and as Stephen said, they're probably disappointed not to keep the clean sheet. I think it's a worry for them. They've conceded so many goals this season, but fight that they got the three points. OK, um, we saw the... Good and the bad of Gary McCabe in that game, or, or maybe the bad and the good. We, we'll have a look at that uh, challenge. Uh, it's kind of it's pretty obvious that it was a, a, a straight red card, really, wasn't it? Or is it? Gary, he has lots of good qualities, and, and you know this. <coughs> yeah, this is definitely not one of them. I mean, he's well out, well out of order. If he meant that, he deserves to go. On a f fellow professional, if he means to do that, that's looking to break somebody's leg. If he meant to do it, if he didn't. But looking at it from there, he's well over the top. I don't know what, don't know what went through his mind at that moment. You know, only Gary knows that. It was a horrendous tackle. And the good thing about it is, the, the boy didn't break his leg. Yeah. You know, that's, that's the that's one positive to come out of that. You know, that was, that was a bad tackle. And I'm sure when Gary sees that, he won't be too proud of it, you know? Yeah, yeah you really can't defend that tackle. It's over the top, late, very strong. It's, you know, it's a leg breaker. It is, it's a tough one. And, the only the defence for Alan Kelly, there is no, he's standing right in front of him. I don't know how he doesn't see it. It's a definite sign. He doesn't even give a free kick for it. So obviously he just doesn't see the incident at all, which yeah. is inexcusable for me. He's only 10 yards away from the, from the incident and it's a, it's a poor one. Lucky yeah. that the player wasn't badly injured, but yeah. the other quality there, as you've seen in Gary, is that the goal he scored, a terrific goal, a great strike, and he has lots of qualities. When he looks at that, he won't be happy himself. Mm. I'm surprised at Alan Kelly because the referees have been clamping down on this kind of thing this year. And the funny thing about it was, this was the first week we didn't have a player sent off, I think. Yeah. Now, we had a manager sent off, but no player, but that was definitely, that was definitely a worthy sending mm. off there. Speaking of uh, players with qualities, Gary Twig, yet again, Johnny showing what he can do best. That's what he does, you know, he scores the goals, people go and watch games and they say he doesn't do a lot. You watch it here, ball comes into the box, never takes his eye on the ball, takes the short way round, it looks a simple goal, but the defender, you'll see him, he never takes his eye off, but the defender goes back towards the goal, Gary takes the short way round. The same here again, he doesn't, doesn't do too much movement, but again, as soon as the ball comes alive, bang, he's in on it. He gets around the back of the defender, you'll see him here, just in around the defender, he's forced to the ball, instinct. This one here, he doesn't actually score, but if you look at him here, look at the space he, he gets himself into there. On his toes, alert. He probably disappointed, but a great block by, by Crowley to get the block in. But you'll see him here, he, he's assessing the situation on his toes, and he's alive to us straight away. And how many goals this season, and over the last season, couple of seasons, has he scored like that? And just very briefly, Colm, um, from Drada's point of view, Mick was saying that maybe he felt some of his players were a little bit overawed, almost going to uh, Tala. I'm, I'm not sure I agree with him. I actually thought they, they played quite well. I mean, I think opening out in the first 20, 25 minutes, they had like two or three really good chances. Like, if one of them goes in, the game changes. changes. If Gary McCabe gets sent off, the game changes as well. So it's a difficult run of, run of games for them. I think they've only got one win in their last six, so they really need to probably mm. start picking up a few more wins if they're going to be challenging for the European places, you know. OK, yeah, incidentally, the uh, former Shamrock Rovers and Drogheda goalkeeper Robbie Horgan, a great servant to uh, both clubs, is to have a testimonial match at Hunky Dory's Park. Uh, that's on Saturday the 16th of June at 6.30. A plethora of legends from both clubs down through the years will be lining out. You can get more details on the Drogheda United uh, website. Now, we're going to uh, switch tack for a moment and go to